So I, it is my pleasure and my honor to introduce you, um, to those of you who don't know Marcus, to introduce you here to Marcus Linde from Fags Agent. Um, uh, over the last few years, um, from the first time we invited Marcus to be at Westway Lab in Portugal, um, Marcus has proved uh, to me and to um, a circle of professionals that we usually hang out with, um, he's proven to be an incredibly, um, an incredible force for knowledge sharing and, and for being absolutely fearless with, with sharing both the good stories of how you learn um, to get into the sync business, but also the bad stories, and uh, and just really telling the truth about how things really work. Um, and uh, sorry to be so long-winded in my introduction, but I'm you know still uh, gathering my coffee thoughts. The the issue is that with with uh, a, um, such a complicated process as sync, it is quite different from. Um, the regular music business. So you, you have the regular activities that artists have with agents and managers and this sort of thing. And then, totally on another planet, you have sync. And, and this is what we will try to sort of uh, demystify and explain a little bit about. But before we do, I would like to sort of do the usual show of hands to see how many artists we have present. Okay, so there's a few artists. How many managers? Okay, labels? A couple labels? Publishers? No publishers? Okay, mental note. Mental note. No um, and who have I missed? Uh, agents? Live agents? Festivals? Okay, some festivals as well. Who's that fellow in the cap there? You have nothing. You have nothing written on your forehead, sir. There's something missing. Me? Yes. Uh, like this? Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> Sonic visions. Yes. Okay. Much better. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, you know, we have we have a cross section. We have artists. We have managers. We have a couple labels. Um, and I think we have a good room now. And those that moved up front, thank you. Those that didn't move up front, we have some seats up here still. So you don't have to sit all the way back. Uh, you don't have to hide back there. I see you. Yeah. Um, Marcus, I would um, maybe start on a personal note and ask you a little bit about your story of how you got to being a sync agent. So how did you come to this thing known as sync? Can you just start there? How long have we got? Now it's uh, uh, good morning from from me as well. Um, it's glad that the turnout is so. I'm glad the turnout is so, is so great. We uh, we never know up front like how many people will come, and we we always ask about who is in the room because these sessions aren't sessions that we that we do in a way like like a performance. Like it's every time the same. It's, it's every it's every time different, uh, uh, depending on, on the people in the room. And of course, we ask you to. Raise your hands and feel free to ask questions if you if you find that we are digressing, if if we are talking weird stuff in your mind. So always feel free. Both of which we do. That, that's that's the entertaining part. <laughs> um, no, but how how did I get into into becoming a, a synth agent? Like I've been, uh, I'm a bit older than, than than most of you, so I've been in the music business for quite some time. I started out as a music journalist some, I don't know, 35 years ago, almost 40 years ago. Um, and I slowly grew into the music business. It was always my dream to like do something in the music business. And in those times, it was a time before MTV, before the internet, uh, before network situations like this. Um, becoming a music journalist was my first dream. Uh, and I worked for, for local magazines, music magazines in Germany. Um, then I got my first job for, for, a, for a small independent distribution company in the early 80s. We distributed stuff, bands like The, the Smiths, uh, Sisters of Mercy, Einstürz and Neubau, which some of you may know. 
Um, so very left of center, like the early wave, first wave of German and international independent new wave punk music. Um, and I was found by people from the CBS label, which uh, is now Sony Music, or grew into Sony Music, but before it was Sony Music, it was CBS. Um, home to artists like Bruce Springsteen and stuff like that, but also of a lot of left of center acts like the early REM stuff, for instance, Wall of Wood and bands like that. So they hired me as a, as a press agent first, and then I slowly grew into marketing um, and became a product manager. Is Most of you will know what a product manager does, like taking care of the releases of the, of the marketing, of the, of the promotion of, of, uh, of the product. Um, from then I became the... Um, and uh, I got my own label imprint within Sony called Dragnet, uh, which was an alternative label. We signed domestic artists, international artists like Bad Religion, The Mission and bands like that, New Model Army, but also German artists. And we did the marketing for bands like Oasis and Rage Against the Machine, uh, Beastie Boys and, and, and stuff like that. And I, by that time, like after 12 years in the, in the music industry, I was a bit fed up with it and I took a sabbatical uh, and rearranged myself and my position in the whole thing and uh, reinvented myself as a music publisher which I didn't have a clue about in the, in the, when I started out uh, and publishers usually were considered the people who only turned up when there was a gold disc to, co to collect uh, for, for the artists but they never knew what, what, what they did behind the scenes um, it's, it's a shame that no publisher is here. Yeah, well, uh, there's been a few more people who come into the room since we started. So uh, right now, are there any music publishers in the room? There is a music publisher in the room. <laughs> Stand up, please, good sir. <laughs> can, can, uh, where are you based? Uh, Slovenia, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Very, very good. Excellent. Um, so, because, because uh, it's okay. You yes, can sit. Yeah. yeah, you can sit. <laughs> um, it, it's it's um, it's a very good thing that you are here because earlier we asked if there were any music, music publishers in the room. The answer was no, and of course, to me, when you think of sync and and licensing music for film advertising, the the, the figure of the music publisher to me is a central figure in this in this activity, and. Um, and it's sometimes, it, it can be, uh, be, because we want to be able to reach everybody and explain how this works, uh, forgive us if we have to go back to the basics and explain what music publishing actually is. Um, so maybe, maybe you can help us with this, or, or we can maybe find out from Marcus how you found out about publishing and what it means to, to publish music or what a music publisher does. Yeah, I, m I must say I was totally surprised to, f to find out that as a publisher, I learned about more about music and the people behind the music than I ever could have hoped for in, in, a, in a record company. Really, in a record company is like is what it's your normal conception of the music business. You sign an artist, you produce a record, you sell the record, you do the promotion. In a positive sense, it's it's a it's a glamorous business. You're out there at the at the concerts and at the gold receptions and 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 in. Uh, in dinners and, and business lunches and everything, but you miss out on a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Uh, and that is the, the songwriting, the creative process itself. Uh, and, and by the songwriting, as a composer or, 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 a, or a songwriter, a lyricist, uh, this is where you create the copyrights and this is where you create the stuff, the goods that we are talking about, that, that we are bringing into the sync business, basically. So, so let's let's just get technical and break it down to really basic stuff. A music publisher deals with the copyrights of the words and the music that are written before a song is recorded, even. So, the words and the music um, is is what we have on the publishing side. On the master side, the recorded music side, you have the rights of the actual recording, um, which which generally has been licensed. Um, either from the publisher or through a right society via uh, the payment of uh, mechanicals. So uh, we have in sync, well, whenever we think of sync, we have two sides. 
we have the publishing side, which is the licensing of the words in the music, and we have the master side, which is the licensing of the recorded music. Is that right? That, that, that's correct. Let's call it the, the rights ownership, the, the, the master and, and, the, and, and the copyright ownership. And, and it is always these rights owners that we have to go back to when we want to sync music into commercials or films. Maybe we should explain the word sync, with which everyone uses and it's used in every, in every program and stuff. Sync stands for synchronization, and it, excuse me if, 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 I'm, if I'm too simple with that, but it means the synchronization of music to a moving picture. And this process is as, as simple as it may sound, but it's one of the most creative processes in the use of music, and of course in, in, in filmmaking. Um, because it brings together two, two media. It, it brings together the music as, as a result of a creative process and the film as a result of a creative process. And this is like a crucial point in creating, in creating something new. Um, and of course, to get these things together, it, it takes like creative people, but it also takes the clearances of right situations. And that's what we are doing, like supporting the creative process and, 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 uh, and clearing the right situations. So, if, if you think of, of what Marcus, how Marcus is describing sync as a, a synchronization of music to film, to a, to a moving picture, I also think of it as, as a different, uh, or on a different level of synchronization, because in order to get the deal done, you do need to get all of these people to understand what it is we are doing. In other words, you have to synchronize the minds of, of, of the clients on the client side and you have, to, you have to also synchronize the minds or get the agreement of the people on the publishing side and the recorded music master side, which is why the term master sync is often heard. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit more about the client side. So we all know the music side, we know the artists, we know the labels, now we know at least one publisher. And, um, and so we know our side of the business, but tell us about the client side, what's that like? Well, let's concentrate on advertising for, for, the, for the sake of, of, okay. of, of better, uh, better explanation. Um, first, we have, a, we have a client, we have, we have a brand, we have a product um, that is going to be advertised. Uh, for that, the client or the brand hire an advertising agency. Every advertising agency is different. An advertising agency brings together like all the experts that it takes to create a commercial or, or general an, an advertising campaign. Can be print, can be outdoor campaign, but we're talking the, the commercial, the, the, the TBC, the TV commercial. Um, so there is a department in the advertising agency that handles the production of these commercials. Um, Sorry to interrupt. So you're describing the client as the brand itself. The client is the brand. The, okay. the, the, the brand is usually referred to as the client. So you have the client, and you have an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. And who else? So like, how does it work? Well, in the advertising agency, you have, you have the creatives who create the campaign and who create the film, who write the scripts, who create the claim of a campaign, the, the, the wordings, the, the, the script to everything. Uh, and of course, they cannot do the film themselves, so there is a production company for the film, which includes the actual producer of, a, of an individual film, and who takes care of finding the right director of a film. Like, it, like as, as, as with movies, there's a director to every commercial as well, and there's director, famous directors from movies who've made it big in, or come from commercials, and the other way around, commercial directors Who've, who've moved into the in, into the, the film industry, um, so all these people, all these instances, have a saying in how a commercial looks like and how a commercial may sound like. So the client gives gives goes to the agency, create a commercial. The agency starts to create a commercial. At this stage, already first people start thinking about music. It may be the personal reference of, 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 of the creative person within the company. It may be a first idea of, uh, the, uh, of the head of the company. Because like, music is something that everyone is interested in. Everyone wants, wants to contribute. Like in, 
let's say, like, like in football, everyone has an opinion because it's available all over the place and, and, and it's, uh, it's easy to say, I would like this or I can hear this. And when we, we, we have a, everyone would say, like when we do a commercial about banks, we need a song that refers to money. I have an idea, let's, look, let's, let's use money by King Floyd. Exactly, like that's, that's the easiest thing that like everyone seem, seems to have an idea about that. But that's where the, where the, where the creative process starts already. That's, that's even before it gets serious, things are already set in motion in, 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 in that field. So all these instances have a saying in the music. Okay, but you're describing quite the complex ecosystem between the, the client, uh, the, the ad agency, the production company, the director, and they all might have opinions about music, but they don't come from the music world. So how, in very practical terms, and this is what we want to really try and understand better, uh, if, if in, on, on the music side we have the artists, uh, the labels, um, the publishers, and on the, on the other side we have this ecosystem of, of people in the advertising world, how do they come together? How do they find each other? Are, is there any kind of rhyme or reason or, or rule um, through which this commerce actually happens, these people getting together and doing syncs. That's the most complex question of the whole thing because the rule is that there is no rule. Like there's every advertising agency has a different structure and a, and a different way like who is in charge of what and all the other in instances I mentioned, they all have a different position at different stages of a project. So there is no one way into that. There is not one person at the agency or at the production company, or not the same person every time, who is in charge of something like that, who the other side could address to. Like uh, also, on, let's shortly come back to, 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 to our side, like on, on, on the creative side. We don't have one person or one instance that, is, that has uh, like in a company that has the job of delivering music to commercials, like the, the major industries, like the labels and, and the publishers, um, have started to, uh, to have sync managers in their ranks who do nothing. Mr. Publisher, are you still there? Yeah. Do, do you have a, a sync manager at your publishing company, someone who handles syncs here in Slovenia at your company? Yeah, that's me. Okay, great. Well, we have a sync manager. Yeah, that's, that's a living example. That, that's, that, that's great. That, but that's only developed over the over the recent years. Before that, like everyone who was the first on the phone, basically got got the job and, and tried to uh, try to get something going. That's actually how I got into it. When when I was working this publisher, it just happened that advertising agencies or individuals from advertising agencies searching for music desperately rang up the phone, the phone number of my publishing company and said, I'm, we know that you have this band or this, this song or that you know the manager of, of this pen. Can, can you help us to find the rights to that? Can you help us to clear it or is it available for, for a commercial? And I never heard about that request or that, that line of business before, so I slowly grew into that. But it only proves that it, there is no proper rule. It has become more professional over the recent years. Um, and there's people who know more about the music, on the, on the client side, there's people who know more about the music, uh, know, uh, know more about the music business, and have learned at least a few ways of finding the right people on the music side. Still, there is hundreds of publishing companies, there's hundreds of labels, there's hundreds of thousands, millions of artists and millions of songs, of course. Like, how do you find the, the, the right stuff? This is where people like me come into play. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't work for agencies, I don't work for, for labels, I'm a freelance music supervisor, music agent. So I'm the, I'm the middle man, the middle person between the interests of, of, of both sides. Let, let's before before we we come to that, it's it's um, something that I've I've also become aware of um, is is the different level of um, business structure in different markets. In other words, what you're describing, um, 
Or for example, how many people in the room have heard of the, the profession of music supervision or music supervisors? Okay, and how many of you have actually met music supervisors? The same, almost the same. So the ones that don't know music supervisors have not met music supervisors. The ones who know them have probably gone out and tried to meet them. I think it's interesting, for example, when you go to bigger markets like the US and you, and you become aware of advertising agencies who have music supervisors on staff. Mm. This, of course, is not the case in Portugal, where I come from. Um, but so, besides having the, the music cluster of the artists, the, the labels and the publishers on one side, and having the advertising cluster on the other side, you now appear to have music supervisors on the client side, I don't want to get confused now, and sync agents on the music side. Is that, is that a fair... Sync agents not on the music side, but in between the music right side. Between. Right, okay. right, right in between. I'm not on the music side. Actually, I try to get to find the best from the music side, or the most fitting song, the, the best uh, people, the best catalogs for, for the individual occasion. Uh, so I'm the, the, I'm, I'm the friend of, of the music side, and I'm the friend of the advertising side. But I have to be very strict with both my, my friends uh, in order to do it right. How would you separate, then, the definition of the roles of a sync agent versus a music supervisor? It's, it's a good question. Like it's, it's, it's easier to, to differentiate that when you look at it from the film aspect. In, in, a, in, in film, a music supervisor is brought in to, to really, to, to not just clear rights or find an individual song, but to supervise the music of the whole movie. That means mostly and firstly to take care of the, of, of the score, to find the composer of a movie, and to supervise the cooperation between the composer and the director and the, and the film production, which can go as far as to go to a recording studio while there's recording going on, how, how orchestras are uh, recorded, conducted, how scripts are written, and stuff like that, to always be there and supervise the, pro the process of creating the music for a movie, plus helping to find the right song for individual scenes, which can be a scene, music coming from a radio, or, or someone singing it, or, or like we all know the Tarantino soundtracks, where, where the song is the soundtrack, uh, uh, finding finding that stuff, being like the right hand person to the director, fulfilling the director's vision of, of the music in, in a film. That's what a music supervisor does. It's more involved in the creative process. As a music agent, it's a luxury when I'm involved in the creative process as well, but mostly I would say like two thirds of the of the time I'm providing a, let's say, a creative service. Okay. The, the service being f researching music, finding music, providing music, and clearing rights. So that's not very romantic, and it's not as romantic as like living in music all, all the time. Well, no, but it's incredibly um, relevant to the, to the case at hand. And, you know, I, I want to dive into your day-to-day operations um, of, of how that process actually works so that artists and labels can know a little bit more about how Marcus works as a sync agent and how music actually gets placed. But before we do, I want to take the time to also um, take it to the floor and see if anyone so far has any questions or, or any, any pertinent sort of uh, interventions that, that you want to bring up or you know as we speak please feel also feel free to put up your hand and, and interrupt and ask questions but uh, any questions at this moment no questions ah good one question it's just maybe better a remark uh, considering the job of music supervisor in the territory of ex Yugoslavia there is no money for as far as I realize because I'm working in a music publishing for is it necessary? Yeah. Oh, so we have two music publishers in the room now. One is X, X music publisher, 
but uh, there was always a problem when it comes to, okay, advertising has kind of money, but when it comes to uh, film, team production, there is always low budgets and then there is no position, a place to put a music supervisor in there because it's a regular producer who solves the rights and, and finds the director's wishes and tries to, to implement them in. And that's a thing, how do you think you can, we can solve it because sometimes, you know, when, when it comes to artists, they don't care whether the country has 2 million or 50 million citizens, the, the, their price is the same. Marcus, would you like to? Yeah, it's it. That, that's 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 one of the basic questions of, of, of the business, uh, and and I think the problem. Is it working? The, the problem is uh, goes for most of the territories, not just your territory. That there is a discrepancy between what they want in terms of music, what, to, what they want to use, their 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 visions, like the, the biggest Hollywood productions, the biggest advertising campaigns, like an Apple campaign is always brought up as a good example or something like that, but no one is willing to spend money on the rights in the first place and on the on the music supervisor as well because it's in, in, in the UK and in the US as a supervisor you, you get your money for, for your job and the good thing is that people listen to you as well. In other territories it's difficult to explain what for an agency to the client why they need an extra 2,000, 3,000 euro for someone outside taking care of the music uh, because the client would say, well, that's what I hire you for. What, what do you need other people for? And the music, I, I could do that in the afternoon and I can tell you what, uh, what I want to use and then you take care of it. So it's, it's, it's a lack of knowledge about the, the searching process and it, it's a lack of respect to the medium because music being available all around, everyone thinks it's just there for grabs, and, and, and what's, what's the bloody problem? It's commercial about the bank, let's use a song with money, or something as, as, as simple as that. Um, and of course, it takes a bit of ex explaining to the rights owners as well that for a commercial with a low budget and with a, with a uh, limited running, uh, let's say in a regional TV or something, you cannot get 50,000 euro. It's, uh, or, or a film in, in or a film for that matter of, of, of course like there, there, there is a budget and it's a good situation when you know the budget you have to be very transparent about the budget as a music supervisor or music agent you have to, to do something with the budget you have, you have to work with that it takes a lot of explaining it takes a lot of patience it takes a lot of resources um, over the years I think I have managed to convince a few agencies and production companies to really invest that a little bit more money in the in the process of clearing rights or finding finding songs, etc. Because it's worth it. It can save you money. It can get you the best value for your money. And of course, finding the right music and finding the right songs it makes your film better. It, it gets closer to, to, to the vision. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think, um, if, if I may, I'll, I'll add something to, to this very important question. It's the same situation in Portugal. There are no music supervisors. There were no music supervisors in Portugal. And um, I was at a film festival in France, Les Arcs, in December. And by coincidence, there was a Portuguese film in the, in the work in progress section of the film festival. And, um, and the producer in this case was trying to do all the music clearances on his own, as, as they do. And, um, but he, you know, he sort of knew there was a publishing side and a master side, so it, he wasn't at ground zero, but, you know, it, um, but when, when you explain that by investing in hiring a professional music supervisor to do this job within the, the, the team, that you're actually lowering how much money you end up spending in some situations, licensing music without knowing what you're doing, um, and also increasing the response time exponentially because the music supervisor has the contacts directly with the publishers and the labels and knows their way around the music. So you're actually, make, you're actually doing a better job licensing better quality songs for a lower budget. So you're, the, 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 this is what the explaining 
is meant to do. It's, is that not the case? Like, that, that's the goal. The, 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 that's the goal, and, and, and also, uh, uh, since we keep mentioning it, the right situation is a big part of, of, of the whole process, and finding right music or proper music or the right song, the right composer is one thing, but clearing the rights in a way that the commercial that it can be used in a commercial without the danger of someone coming in and saying, you're using my song and you haven't asked me, I want you to stop immediately. That's a nightmare for a client, it's a nightmare for an, for an agency, uh, and you would be surprised to see how often we still have situations where someone who just starts to clear eyes of things that he or she can do that because they know a few people on, 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 on the music side, or they know that DJ, or they're having beers with that artist, and think they have cleared something and put it on a commercial, and then you get the phone call. Say we have a little bit of a problem. There is someone calling himself a publisher who says he has the rights to the song in the commercial, but I got it from the artist, so I thought I was on the uh, on, on the safe side. So it's the, the rights clearance stuff. Is you're smiling? You, you, you probably you've probably have uh, experienced some, something like that. That it's 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 a cliche, but it, it always happens. But then again, if you if you if you do a commercial, you take the best director you can find, you take the best cameraman you can find for, for the job, you take the best actors you you can find, the best location. Why is it that you always save on the music side? It, it, you don't want to spend the money that, that you normally spend for a business lunch for, 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 for someone doing the, the music research and the and, 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 and the rights clearances. It's it's a, it's a bit it's a bit strange and schizophrenic, but that is a big problem in most of the territories, uh, with most of them presented here, but also in like all over the place, except let's say for the US or for the UK or France, for, for that matter. It happens in, in, in Germany all the time. They, we, we pride ourselves to have like very efficient structures and, 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 and companies and everything. But it always happens on the music side where everyone thinks they have a clue and no one really has. Um, of course, earlier that was a rhetorical question, uh, but, but, but it's, um, it, that's, that's very much the case um, in, in, in other markets as well. Mm. Now, how, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, how, what, it, what is the mechanics through which you present music or licensed music? How does your day-to-day -day business go? Like, who do you interact with on both sides? How, what, is the pro what is your process? Let, let, let me maybe lead you through the, like, how a job exactly. appears, how on, it, yeah. uh, how okay. appears on my desk and, and, and how, I, how I kind of get through it. The, the first thing is the call from mostly an advertising agency. Can you help us find the music for a commercial? Um, which hopefully I can, and the f the f and I get a set of basic information about the project at hand. I get a briefing, like what they are looking for. The briefing contains sometimes a mood film, or a, like which which is like a film made out of other films, just to give an idea what the end result will will look like, what the general idea is. Sometimes you get an animatic, which is like. A little animate, an animation film of what they hope the end result will, will, will look like. You sometimes get a reference song, which is mostly like so something that everyone knows or something which is very obscure that the director has found on YouTube. Um, and you get a budget. So these are the parameters of, like within you, you start to work, and which, uh, within they want to find you. Uh, find you. You, you get a deadline, uh, which in advertising mostly is unfortunately very very close. Tomorrow, there's, there's the, no. There's the famous Friday quarter to six calls. Uh, we have a presentation on Monday morning. Can you help us? Uh, and 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 that's where you start to kind of that's where change, you change your them. weekend schedule yeah. and 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 forget about sleeping on the weekend. Um, uh, but it, it all starts with this set of information, and 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 I, I have a few questions to 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 the people at the agency. Like, 
uh, for what media they need the rights. Mostly it's TV, but then it's internet, of course. It can be the use in cinemas, can be the use in radio, uh, uh, can be an image film rather than, than, than commercial. So we have to know the rights uh, requests in order to see in what kind of budget window we're moving. I go back several times about the seriousness of a budget. Mostly it's a low budget, as you mentioned earlier. You're surprised how what, what people think they can get away with in, in terms of musical budget. So I try to get the optimum, not the maximum, but the optimum out of a music budget. And it, that already asks for a certain level of trust between me and the, and, 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 and the agency side. They have to be open about this. This, this is not a market where you can get something better but try, by trying to be clever and, and do something behind someone's back or reducing rates or something like that. It is important that we're all on the same page. Sure. So when, when I have this at hand, I turn around and look at my musical resources. My, Sorry, I'm just thinking about what you said, and I said sure, but I'm not actually. I'm actually not sure. You're not sure. No. <laughs> uh, you said it's important to have that transparency when you are dealing with um, the advertising agency. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's any different when you're dealing, for example, with a production company? It's not different than it, it, it only depends like within the structure like who is in charge of the of the given budget and there's 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 all kinds of uh, um, ideas and problems that come from who is in charge like a production company gets the budget from the advertising agency so of course they deduct a percentage for their work from the top that means that a percentage of the musical budget is also deducted so sometimes it's assuming there is a preset category for music budget yeah so but, but that, that that goes smaller and smaller but then on the other hand on the on the production side you sometimes have people who are more into the music from their affinity towards the music from understanding the process from understanding uh, how important it is to to find the right music for the director rather than for the client the director is in charge of the creative process and and mostly it's the the script written by the director already with some music or at least a musical vision in mind so there's a better understanding on the for music on the production side uh, there's and but they are much more strict when it comes to budgets uh, and it's the other way around with agencies sometimes that, that they may they they hope that they can get more money for uh, for, 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 for the music, but uh, they have different ideas about what music they, they want to use. It's complex. Okay, so it's 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, question. Just one question. When do the agencies get in touch with you? At which level? It's on pitch level or it's on project level? Uh, totally different. That this Friday course that I mentioned is when everything is finished and they have like some mood music or reference music uh, on uh, on the film, or they have uh, they have worked with a reference song, and the client has kind of fallen in love with that song, and and, and, and they want it, and they only just found out that Coldplay are not available for for commercials, and especially not for five thousand euro. So that that's when when the problem starts. So that's towards the end of a project. At the moment, I'm working on a project where, where I'm brought in at, at a very early stage, a pitching stage where uh, I submit um, a range of songs in a range of, 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 of uh, different musical styles, uh, some instrumentals, some, uh, some with, uh, with vocals, in order to give them an idea in what musical direction uh, the, the, the mood film can go. So everything is possible. There's, there's no rule to that. <laughs> whether, whether, it's, um, whether you have a bit more time or whether it's the five o'clock in the afternoon Friday scenario um, and you have the briefing on your desk mm -hmm. um, and you have the project what are your steps in, in, in carrying out your your function well, even during the, the the briefing process it already starts to work in in, in, in my head because uh, I, I have like a basic database at home uh, consisting of some 30 to 40,000 songs from, from different sources. 
uh, repertoire sources, and these repertoire, well, it, it sounds a lot, it, it is not a lot, it's, there's a lot of stuff that I hardly ever touch, uh, touch in that, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's separated by my different repertoire sources, and that's mainly you or the music side, that's publishers mainly, that's labels, that's individual artists or managements that submit their music to me, uh, who are in more or less regular contact with me, where we talk about music, talk about the licensing process, uh, because it's not all, not just about the music. It, uh, my my partners on the, on the music side have to have an, a basic understanding of what we are talking about here at the moment about the right situations. I need to be a hundred fifty percent sure who owns the publishing rights, who owns the master rights. I have to be sure that when I make this call on Friday at a quarter past six then, uh, if I found something that I will get someone talking to me who allows me to use the music at such a short note, uh, and who then doesn't say, well, I have to call the drummer who is on holiday in Morocco, uh, and I have just as an example, he's got food poisoning. He got food poisoning, and he's not available in, in uh, because he's in hospital, uh, or he is not friendly with the band anymore, or uh, we we have lost our label deal five years ago. I just forgot to mention stuff like that. So so I need to be sure about the the, the rights situation before or at the same time uh, when looking for for the music itself. So are are you saying that out of the thirty or forty thousand songs in in your database? You've you've sort of gone through it and and registered all the necessary metadata to know the right situation of everything that you have on hand. Is that is that what you've done? I, I haven't done that. I have to trust the people who deliver or submit that stuff to me and and who uh, uh, who I've talked to before and I can only take on music that is 150 percent true. I, I can't do that myself in the first place, but it always happens uh, as, as, as the next step. So having that database and assuming that it is a safe database when it comes to rights, I get into it with, with the briefing and I, 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 I most, when I start out I refer to playlists that I've made over the, the years with certain musical moods, with, mu with musical styles, with certain musical backgrounds, just to get into the process of Finding proper music for 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 a uh, for, for a briefing. So that's that's a that's a very intense round of brainstorming in which I collect let's say 20 to 100 songs, which I all throw in like on, on a big heap in the in the first place just to get into it. Then during that process, I find out that I probably will need more and more specific specific stuff. So I send out a call or a pitch to some of the partners I'm working with and tell them uh, confidentially uh, I need music and, and, and I give them my version of the briefing. Well, you, you translate the briefing. I translate the briefing, that, that's, that, 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 that's correct. And it's because uh, the advertising people describing music mean different things than, than uh, uh, the music people. And, and you, all, you always get a lot of where they think it's very original briefings, but it's mostly we need something positive, uplifting, happy. Sometimes they are as precise as saying we need a female voice. Let's have it Scandinavian sounding. Um, we want we want some we want summer in the in, in, the, in the topic, or we want friendship, or we want um, family. That's and and you get these catchwords, and you secretly go on oh, no, not again because it's like it's. It's it's always the setting, and then you look at the script, and and you look at the at the mood film, and say, okay, I have to translate what he means, what he means with this. I have to translate it to to my repertoire sources. And, and once that sort of um, technical process or, or that hurdle is cleared, and you've presented some ideas to to the client, um, what's the process from there? I mean, I, ima I imagine the answer is it varies depending on the situation, but. You, you, you've jumped 24 hours now. So you, oh, the, the, sorry, the, sorry. You, you, you've assumed that I've already found like, I guess the, I've, the, I've the, the perfect I've, 10 proposals for... I've assumed <laughs> your, your uh, excellent uh, expediency and, and accuracy in, in, in finding the solution, but 
Tell us about that. No, but but for the sake of, 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 of the panel, of course, of course, we can do that. I always find something, and 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 I, you're like the, the mounted police in Canada. You always get your man. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's that's. Uh, I I could not confront myself with an agency and tell them I haven't found anything. No it's, idea what to do. This no idea what 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 you mean with we will rock you. <laughs> it's it's, it's I, I can't help you. No, I, I always find something, but finding doesn't necessarily mean it's the it's the right thing. I find something that I hope and think is right and I have a vision about and I'm very convinced about submitting. Uh, and of course and that, coming to your question, I don't submit these this pile of a hundred songs and uh, right. don't tell them, look I found these one hundred and you sort them out and, and fortunately something will be in there and I'm in the weekend now. Uh, see, see, see you see you see you soon. Um, I normally I break it down to let's say a handful to ten songs, which then I double check with the rights owners before I submit them. Is it really available? Can I use it? Can I use it for this budget? So that though? narrows it down to three. <laughs> yeah, especially if I don't reach the rights owners, it's, it's 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 difficult. But in a lot of cases, I know that I've that I have carte blanche to 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 use stuff, uh, and it also comes down to experience, like if, when you work with someone for, for 5, 10, 15 years, you know that, 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 you, that you can trust them. Mistakes always happen. I, I, I one thing recently where I, I worked with one's catalog for like 10 years and I've submitted his songs and recordings like, I don't know, 100 times for, for different occasions. I've gotten the, gotten the occasional uh, sync situation for him. And I used one song. I said it's 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 okay if we use it in a small film scene. It's just a thousand euro. But you say yes, and 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 we have it. So, oh, I forgot to mention ten years ago that just for this song, the publishing is is is, is somewhere else. I say I've asked you about this song like twenty times in the last ten years, and you always say it's clear. And now you tell me that you forgot to tell me that uh, that, that that someone else owns the rights. By that time, I've already submitted the song. Trusting him, so the thousand euro went to someone else. We, we, I couldn't go back to the production and say, "Give me back my song. <laughs> I've made a mistake. I, I let them go ahead with it and, and 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 use it and give the money to someone else." But basically, yes, I, I, I submit my final choice. Um, if I have a mood film, for instance, or if I, if I have a, a, a an animatic, some moving pictures, I. Uh, in a very amateurish way, I cut the part of the song, which I think is the essential part for the for the commercial. I, I cut it, edit it to the to the uh, to the film in, oh, wow. in, in Garage Band or iMovie. So that I that takes some skills. Well, it's well basic skills. At least know how to how to cut and present I'm, I'm present and 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 stuff like that. So so. Hopefully, I can submit not just a bunch of songs, which is very difficult for the client side and for the agency side to decipher in the end. What the hell does he mean by submitting this song uh, for me? So yeah, that, that's really kind of like where you show them yeah. what you mean, not, yeah. you know, not explain it with nice flowery words, but you actually almost do their job for them. It's especially or no. when it comes to presenting my submissions to the client, not within the agency, also within the agency, but especially to the client. What what does he mean by submitting this Croatian punk song to this uh, to to this pitch, which doesn't have anything to do with punk music, but cutting it and editing it to the the actual film explains everything, and suddenly it works, and it, you make you make them realize that how how it can, how it can work. So let's let's go forward because I just realized we're as always running out of time. But what happens after that twenty four hours? You've presented it. Um, how does the process unfold at that point? Well, the, the process after that process is taken out of my hands. There's so many individual input demands, requests, opinions, statements, feedbacks or non feedbacks that mostly it's silent. Silence for a day, a week, two weeks, and you sometimes think that you. So it's the hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait, and, and you sometimes you think you're forgotten, and then like after a week, you said, maybe I get back to them without pushing them. 
said, is the job done? You found something else? You're doing something else? No, 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 we're really we're still busy with it. Like, can you give us the, 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 the budget for this song? We want it. So why didn't you call earlier? Well, we forgot. I, th I thought my secretary called you. And so, so, so it's, you wait for feedback, basically. And if the feedback is positive, you go into the final clearance. That means at this stage, you only have the, the OK that you can use, the copyright and the master right. But every rights owner reserves the right to go back to, to the original rights owner, which means, in that case, the composer, the lyricist, and the, and the performing artist for the final OK. And hopefully, you don't get a, a, an unpleasant surprise at that stage. You finalize the clearing process. OK, now, in, in that process, the final process of actually getting the uh, amounts negotiated and cleared on the publishing side and on the master side, um, what can you tell us, for example, about concepts like uh, MF, MFN and some of the technical uh, aspects of, of licensing? Well, MFN is not like a process, it's, 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 it's a term, it, it means the most favored nations, which, uh, as you said uh, in the beginning, without the copyright, without the, the, the composers of a song, you cannot use one anyway. So this is what you negotiate first and what you find out if it's available. If a, a composition is available, then it's normally easy to get the recording to go with it as well. So, sorry to interrupt, but just to emphasize, the, the central role and the importance of the music publishers or ex-music publishers also <coughs> in the room. Um, but, but so you start with, with that part. And then, and then how do you sort of bring in the recorded side? And what is MFN? MFN means that a party requests the same amount of money for their rights, the same fee uh, the high, as the other highest request for a fee is like if, if, if I get a quote from, from a publisher for let's say 10,000 euro for the rights of the of 100% of the copyright usually I get the proposal from the from the master owner from the label who said from us it's let's say 8,000 but MFN and MFN meaning like if there's another party who gets more than 8,000 I get more as well so basically that means both parties get the, get the same. And would you say that makes it, <clears throat> in a way, easier to start with a publishing side MFN quote and then tell the label, look, this is what the publisher is getting, so this is what it's worth? Or how, how, how is that? For, 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 forget the MFN thing. It's, MFN is a ritual, and it's, it's, it's a given thing that usually both, both parties get the same. Period, and there may be situations where, where, where it's different, where we're not using, let's say, the original recording that that is asked for, but let's say a re-recording or something like that. So the master side can be can be different, cheaper, cheaper, of course, le less expensive and less complicated to, uh, to, to clear. But the MFN thing is is not the important thing. The, uh, it is most important to clear the copyright situation in the first place. With, if I have the master rights. I still cannot do anything with the master if the copyright is not cleared. Right. So that it starts with the publishers and the composers and the lyricists. And what do you do? We have very few minutes left, but if you have questions, please interrupt. I have one more question, at least. Um, what do you do in situations where you found a song that is unpublished? In other words, it, 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 of, of course you have writers and composers, but you don't have uh, the professional figure of a music publisher to give you a copy of the registration or tell you for sure what the splits are. How would you deal with that? If a song like that tur turns up in my playlist at all, and, and uh, this, is the, this is the first step, but I, I, I work with a lot of stuff that is at very early stages of registration or, 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 or being signed because I'm, I'm curious about new music, and new music very often is not found just in the, in the, in the given structures. Um, if I find a song suitable enough for, 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 for a sync, if I really want to use it, if I want to go all the way, uh, I get back to the people I got the song from and do detective's work and, and, and uh, let's say, educational work and everything, and try to 
make the whole process of ex explaining the role of a publisher, explaining the role of a, of, of a label, and explaining the role of a music supervisor to them, finding their trust and, and getting the, the authorization to use this song or to propose this song. So uh, to, to, de to find out about the availability of a song is, is a, th th there's hardly any s songs that are not available. You just have to find a way to, uh, to get them. Some of the stuff is uh, if artists generally don't want the songs to be used in, in commercials, but then I don't have them. But, but generally, you f I find the rights owners and I clear it. And it's, but it, it sounds to me, and I think this is a perfect way to end um, and, and open it up to the questions, it sounds to me like intrinsic to what you do in your work is um, a sort of educational formative approach, both to educating the clients, as well as sometimes oh, yes. educating the artists who write the songs and might not know what publishing is, or it, 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 so, so you are a teacher. Yeah, it's, 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 it takes a lot of explaining, like there's, there's the technical process that we talked about, but in between, like to make it work, apart from the, from the factor that it takes the like, right place, right time, piece of luck in, 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 in the end, but in the end, it takes a lot of explaining between these two parties, why it is just 2,000 euro, why it is this Ukrainian punk song that, that I'm using, why it's taken longer than 24 hours, why the, the client wants to cut it down to 30 seconds. A lot of explaining, and it comes back to what I said earlier, it's a matter of trust. I'm in the middle between those parties who want, both want the same in the end, but have to find a way how, how to achieve it, really. It's, it's two different mindsets which have to be brought into sync. Right, so <laughs> sync the music to the pictures and sync the mindsets to, to the different mindset. mindsets. Are there any questions? We're nearly out of time. I have two oh. questions. You have too many questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm from Ukraine, and uh, in our country, it's very chaotic, the market, like, cinema market and uh, the music market as well and I wanted to ask about how like like a manager of the band how you you are making the budget for like uh, the money the band will get from which points it depends uh, and uh, because like in our country I can't understand how like I, like I'm telling the price just from, from the sky I'm taking it from the sky and okay yeah, that will be the, this price or that price you, you mean the budget that the, the music budget of a company well, what the, the artist yeah, gets, yeah. In, gets in the end. Well, usually the, the composers and the, and the artists have uh, agreements with their label and their publishers. And in the yeah. agreement, it says from a sync deal, we get, like in Germany, for instance, is usually 50% of the fee that we are getting. So if we take like a 10,000 euro deal, uh, for, for the music budget of a commercial is 10,000 euro talking about the MFN, 5,000 euro go to the copyright side, 5,000 euro go to the, uh, to the publishing side, uh, to, to, to the master side. The, on the master side, these 5,000 euro are split 50-50 between the label and the artist. The label has the contract with, so it's 2,500 euro for the artist. On the publishing side, it's split 50-50 between the publisher and all composers of a song. So, so these 2,500 euros split down to if it's one, one composer, he gets his 2,500. If it's three, four, five composers, they have to split the money according to the contract they have amongst each other. Usually there's agreements for everything. Like once, but, once the money is there... But you, you're asking how you should quote on, on the value of, of the sync from, your, from an artist's perspective. Yes, but uh, we don't have uh, publishers, we don't have labels, we like make it self-releases, like just uh, like artist rights society we work with in Ukraine, so mm. <laughs> it's... If, if, well, in, in, in that case, as long as you're, you are an artist manager, yep. and, and you, so in that case you represent the artist rights as, as, as recording artists, but also as composing artists, I suppose, yeah, in, yeah. in your special case. So rather than going through a publisher and the label, they all go through you. So you get the 10,000 euros, which, which I mentioned, mm -hmm. and you try to find a, a fair and proper split between mm -hmm. your, your artists and, and, and your composers. And I feel that the 50-50 is but still, still the question is not how to split the 10,000, yeah, it's yeah. how do you set the bar, like how do you quote? Yeah, well, what, what that, that, when there's, 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 
it, it comes with experience really mostly uh, fortunately or unfortunately it's the it's the advertising agencies who say the music budget for this commercial is 10,000 euro. We don't have more, you cannot get more. You so take it. take it or leave it. Yeah, you know, I worked in the US and there, there, there you go. So, so there's, there's, there's not really a lot of room for, there's not really a lot of room for, for negotiating. Sometimes if you, re, if you know that they, that they want this song eagerly, you can say, you can have it for 15,000. You can try your luck. But it can be that for 15,000 they say that we record a cover but version. I mean, like in Europe, it's more or less regulated, these bright prices. Like it isn't, no, no, it no, isn't, no, it isn't. There's, there's no price list, there's, there's, yeah. there's, there's rich, uh, you're saying like, is there a price list that we can refer to? No, it, there's, there's, there's different, there's experiences. In Germany, there's, there's the, the, the um, what is it, you have to help me here, the, the body of music publishers in Germany, the DMV, the Music Publishers the Association. Association. Yeah. Uh, they've found a formula saying that 5% of the media budget of a campaign, yeah. which is the money that they spend to get the spot on the commercial on television, 5% uh, of that should, up to 5%, not 5 up to 5% should be used for the music. So if it's a, a, pop, a, a popular song, it's 5%. If it's a totally new song, it's 1%. Zero point and, also, and also you have to keep in mind uh, the usage, in other words, the kind of media that you're licensing. Yeah. If you're licensing for television, for radio, for internet, and also how long the period of the license is. So you, you can sort of, depending on, on the stage of the career that your artists are at, you can sort of set an internal sort of price table um, for licensing for different media for different time periods, and then adjust accordingly uh, according to the music budget of each slot, but of, of course, if you don't know where to start, yeah, uh, no, that it's it's, it's a problem. I, 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 I see the problem. It's 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 uh, if there's no references at all, you have to create them yourself, and yes. and and it's, it, that takes time. And again, we're talking about education and and trust with the with the with the with the other party. Like for for an advertising agency, agency, they will say five hundred dollars for that thing. Are you, are you out of your mind, you say like usually I, I call five thousand and I wouldn't be out of my mind. So you, you have to find a, a diplomatic way to make it work. People, we are absolutely out of time, over time by at least three minutes. So thank you very much. I'd like to uh, request a round of applause for Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Um, and and of course. I just want to repeat one thing. Marcus is uh, an incredible uh, professional and human being and always available to, to really share the experience. So let's have an extra round of applause for Marcus. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And, th and thanks for, for, for moderating because uh, I can only be as good as you are. So And, and as you are, of course. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.